friends welcome back to another video as usual i am amoga in this video we are going to discuss about tensor flow in just 14 lines it is the machine learning have been gained its more importance in predicting the future predicting the solutions to the complex problems Not making any delay let us jump to the tensor flow in an python before using this you need to install a install a package called tensorflow so i am going to import the tensorflow as tf so in order to use this tensorflow this is the extension i have been used it for so whenever i am going to use a tensorflow instead of writing a full name you can write tf so at the very first line i am going to access the data set which have been present in an mnist so it is being present in an kris so in order to understand more about this mnist you can go to this respective website so it is a it is having a two types here first one has been made for handwriting digits uh, identification and the next one is for fashion database we are going to have a fashion database here so which is ranging from 10 classes so and it is having a input images of 12, 28 cross 28 of a grayscale images you can just mark the words here grayscale images it's having a data set of 60,000 and it is having a test set of 10,000. So this is a guidelines which have been provided in a KRS uh, documentation. In order to use a MNIST, you can make use of this line. Here I am loading this MNIST to the one of a variable called MNIST. So later, as per the directions which have been provided in a KRS. Line Y line, Y test and YX test. So after this line, I am going to have a divisions here. So X trine and the X test have been divided by an 255. So this is why because so we have been seeing that the input image is a grayscale image. So grayscale images means the values will be ranging from 0 to 255. So this is a dynamic range. So in order to make the numbers ranging from 0 to 1. So your machine learning understands the numbers ranging from 0 to 1. So in order to have our efficient results, we are going to divide each pixel values by 255. So based on the grayscale intensity, so it is going to each pixel is going to have a numbers between 0 and 1. So this is the reason why this line have been included. And next one is we have been modulated as sequential so tf.caries.models.sequential so we are having a set of layers so we are going to define a set of layers for an, uh, our machine learning tool so the very first line is our flattened layer so as we know that image is having a two dimension so at the very first line we are going to convert this two dimension into a single 8 into 28 is 724 these many pixels are going to be just divided or is these going to be just converted into a single array from two dimensional to a single dimension and the next layer is we are going to add a denser layer denser layer of fully connected layer so we are going to design a 512 hidden layers so input layer is a one which is the first one and we are having a 512 hidden layers and the final layer is a softmax layer in order to understand all these layers watch this video on alexnet so the next one is we are going to make use of a relu activation function for every hidden layers so once the weighted and the biases are going to be calculated it is going to pass through the relu so relu is activation function which is going to provide the values for every pixels ranging from 0 to 1. The very important thing is dropout in order to avoid the overfitting we are going to include this dropout layers. So this point 2 indicates that so in order to understand what is dropout layer you can watch this video. So what does this point 2 actually indicates that a 20% neurons are randomly activated. So in order to understand what is this dropout and what is this randomly activated 20% of neurons, you can watch that video. And the final layer is a output layer, which is of a softmax layer, which have been just having a output layers as 10. So all these numbers are predefined and this is based on the data set. So Python, before going to a training phase, so here is our 
training phase so this is a training phase so before going to that we need to have a optimizer so this is a mandatory thing in an uh, tensor flow or something like this so at the very first step we are going to tell which of the optimizer we are using ADME we are having a different optimizer so we are going to calculate the losses for it so next one is accuracy all this is the terms are being done before training so once all this have been performed we are going to have a training between x trained data set y trained data set so hypogis is the one which is the maximum iterations which are going to be carried out for single data set so five minutes so for each 60,000 into 5, those many times the training is going to be just carried out. So after this, we are going to see what is the percentage of accuracy. So this is going to be done by using this command called model.evaluate. So model have been created here. So model.fit for training, model.evaluate x test versus y test. So we are having a 10,000 testing data. So here comes our execution. So it takes some time. Let's wait for this. Some coffee before this executes. Find it successfully. You can observe all this training for every epoch is for 1,5. It has been started with accuracy 18% and it has been rising, rising 70, 78, 80%. And later on, it goes on learning so this is the phase what you need to just see here how machine learning will go on learning on its own and it increases the efficiency when it reaches the once it reaches the epoch 5 the final average accuracy will be on